Hello, I am here to help students who are auditioning for the AS, AYS program, um, oboists in particular. I am Kevin Vigno, the oboe professor at the University of New Mexico. You will be playing some scales, you will be uh, playing a solo for your audition, and I'm here today to help you with your um, orchestral excerpts, and there are two uh, for this audition. The first one I'm going to talk about is from the Overture to the Barber of Seville uh, by Rossini. This is one of the most famous co comic operas in the opera repertoire, um, and it's a wonderful overture and really reflects the um, fantastic comic qualities of this opera. Um, I'm going to do this in segments. Um, the first thing you have is actually a solo within the orchestral texture, and I'm going to play it for you first. that there's a range of tempos from 76 to 84 and you should pick a tempo uh, which is comfortable for you where you can really execute everything um, in the excerpt. Uh, as with any orchestral excerpt, whether you're auditioning for a professional orchestra or a youth orchestra, there are some things that the committee is really going to be listening for and the first of those is probably a very steady tempo so I would definitely work on this with your metronome. Um, they're also going to be looking for really accurate rhythms. And so I would suggest actually practicing this um, in four, uh, that is with quarter notes being played um, on the metronome, and also in two, which is um, half notes. Uh, typically a conductor would probably conduct this uh, in two or uh, with the half note beat. Um, be very careful with the dotted rhythm here. We don't want that to get too triplety. In other words, those 16ths at this tempo are actually quite fast, and you want them to sound crisp. So again, make sure the dot on the dotted eighth is long enough. Um, you will notice that there is um, an accent in the second bar. You definitely want to bring out all the accents um, that you see in this part. Um, there is no crescendo written, but I kind of like to phrase this off to the G sharp. Um, in the first phrase and the A sharp in the next phrase. So let me play this again for you. So that's your solo. The next long section is an enormous crescendo starting at letter F and going to letter G. This is a feature of Rossini's music. He loves these long kind of built up crescendos and we often hear them in his overtures but he uses it in other ways as well. There's a famous aria in this opera which is about slander and what's kind of ironic about it is that it's sung by a priest, a bass voice and uh, that aria is called La Cal Calunia and um, you might want to look that up uh, and might want to hear some of the other famous arias from this opera. Um, and in that aria, he has an enormous long uh, crescendo, which illustrates the power of gossip and how at the end it can sound just like a cannon. Uh, and Rossini's audience has actually expected these big crescendos over a long time. So I'm going to play this section. Um, I'm going to try to start as softly as possible, and I should have a pretty full forte by the time I get to G. the big crescendo section. Um, so do start with a nice soft dolce or sweet sound at the beginning. You'll be in a group of winds that are playing this line. Do bring out the accents that you see. He likes to accent the spicy notes, in this case the A sharp in bar 118 and following. Um, 
I would keep that all very soft and not really play the crescendo until it's marked in bar 123. Uh, again, practicing with your metronome is going to be super helpful um, because there's a lot of um, precise rhythms that need to be fitted in here. Um, I'm going to start at 123, and I'm definitely subdividing in my mind in the quarter notes, um, even though I would probably practice with the metronome set to half notes. I really want to set those uh, four thirty-second notes very accurately within the rhythm. Um, the repeated eighth notes, um, which start in 127, I find it helpful to group them so that I make a little crescendo to the sixteenths that come. So not too static. If you give those repeated notes a shape, I think you'll find that they're going to be easier to play. Um, it's not marked, but you don't want those eighth notes to be too long, so more on the staccato side. They're definitely marked at the end, end of the excerpt as staccato, and you'll, you'll want to do that. Um, be cautious when you get to bar 130 and 134 where those eighth notes are. That's a place where the rhythm could fall apart. So I'm going to play one more time uh, from 127, just for a few bars so you can hear that I'm really trying to make those eighth notes accurate. Um, this will be a little challenge for our articulation and just some hints about that. Do use a good fast air stream um, so there's enough energy behind your articulation um, and I would say keep your tongue very close to the reed and not too hard, a very light kind of tongue approach and I think that you'll do well. Um, one more thing to talk about are those quick little 30 second triplets. Um, just get them as close to those next two eighth notes as you can. Almost like grace notes. Well, have fun with this and definitely, of course, hear the overture itself, see how your part fits in with it. And I would listen to a couple of arias too to get a feeling for uh, what a fun comic opera this is. Plenty of things on YouTube, even with the English translation. Of course, the most famous opera in, in this one is the one that um, you've probably heard where he sings Figaro, 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 Figaro. He's actually bragging about all the skills that he has, and um, uh, that one uh, really sets the tone for the, for the whole opera. Um, you have a second excerpt, and this comes from uh, Rimsky-Korsakov. It's the Procession of the Nobles. Um, this one's a little more stately. Um, some similar advice in this one, really observe all the articulations. They've been very carefully marked, including the, um, the accents, sometimes not where we expect them. You will hear one, for example, in bar eight on the third beat. Normally we put accents on a first beat, so this is a, kind of gives it a little syncopated feel. Here's the first section. staccatos have been marked in the first four bars. Um, as they're not marked later, I would say just kind of go to a marcato, a more heavily accented kind of feel in general. Again, it's a procession, so you can imagine these haughty nobles uh, processing. Again, using your metronome will really help you. Make sure the dotted rhythm that you find in bar nine is really a dotted rhythm and not a triplet, and um, have fun with this. In the next section, make sure that you add the D flat. It may sound a little funny to you when you first play it. Um, here's this part. There you go. I think this is a little more um, straightforward than the Rossini, um, but you know, approach them both with the same uh, care. Uh, again, use your metronome. Uh, using a tuner, we all can get one for free on our phones these days, uh, is really helpful. That's one of the things that um, the judges will be listening for, is where your pitch level is. 
And um, if you have any questions, you can reach me by email. Again, I'm Kevin Vigno. My email is kvign at unm.edu. Uh, so wishing you lots of luck on your audition, and hopefully you will all be playing in person in the fall. Bye now.